Okay everyone, welcome back to the Science Shack. I know this is a bit of a weird way to do required practicals, but we're going to try and do them uh, remotely as far as we can, because many of the skills we can still cover while we are uh, remote. So this is required practical nine. I'm hoping you've got a rough idea what's going on already on uh, assessing the rate of respiration in yeast at different temperatures. So to start with, remember this. This is basically what it all comes down to. You should recognize this picture as the electron transport chain in respiration, which of course is where electrons are liberated from those high energy carriers, that NADH, that FADH, and they're used to generate a proton gradient. So you've got high energy electrons being released and flying around all over the place to build that proton gradient, so you end up getting ADP um, turned into ATP. Okay, now obviously yeast is quite a nice flexible uh, organism. It does do aerobic respiration in preference, but if it runs out of oxygen, it does anaerobic respiration, which of course would not then generate these high levels of uh, high energy electrons. Okay, that would just basically stop when it would go into a fermentation mode, which is also what we try and exploit in manufacturing of alcohol and so on. Right, our electron acceptor in this case is not going to be the terminal electron acceptor in the electron transport chain, which as you've just seen and you should know is oxygen. Okay, our electron acceptor is going to be methylene blue okay so when methylene blue accepts electrons it becomes reduced it changes from blue to colorless okay that's the idea so a fixed amount of of methyl blue will take a fixed number of electrons to turn it into um something that's clear something that's colorless so we're basically oxidation reduction and obviously we've done the previous experiment on photosynthesis which had a very similar idea using dc pip which is stain you've used okay so the theory for this basically goes along the lines that the faster the respiration goes, the faster and therefore the more NADH and FADH you are producing. Okay, The faster production of NADH and FADH, the faster electron release that you've got. Um, the faster the electron release, the faster the reduction of methylene blue, and therefore the faster the decolorization. So your job is to measure the rate of decolorization of uh, methyl blue. So you should remember as well, the other stages of respiration here, where all the so we've got the um, glycolysis, we've got the link reaction, okay, and we've got the uh, the Krebs cycle there, where our where all our hydrogens here are being carried away by our reduced carriers, okay. So it's the production of those guys that's ultimately going to give us our supply of electrons in the electron transport chain. So, in terms of variables, this is not uh, too tricky to understand. You should have got this from all your pre-reading and understanding. You're going to have one set of tubes at 55 degrees C and one at 45 degrees C. Okay, the independent variable is temperature. Okay, the dependent variable is the time uh, the blue color takes to disappear, or more accurately, the rate at which the blue color disappears. Okay, so questions for you to think about then: Why would temperature make a difference? What is the is the reason for this? Right. Well, you've got to think about what it is that does most of the processes in respiration. And here's a clue, they all end in A's, okay, in ASE. Okay, so what is making a difference here in terms of temperature, right? Basic back to AS level biology. Control variables we can think of when we are changing the temperature, right? And we're measuring the time taken to decolorize. So basically everything else should be controlled as far as we possibly can. Okay, and that includes the answer to this question: Why do we shake the tubes? Okay, well, when we shake the tubes, what are we mixing into the solution? We're mixing in oxygen, and of course, oxygen is the terminal electron acceptor. So that should make sure that all of the electrons um, that they actually put lots and lots and lots of oxygen through the yeast solution, that all that oxygen is acting as an electron acceptor at the start of the experiment, so the yeast is respiring nice and aerobically to start with, so when you do your experiment, you are measuring the aerobic production of electrons. Okay, that's the point of that bit. Now, on rate, you are gonna be asked to calculate a rate, and that's a bit of a peculiar thing, right? Um, which basically is usually a thing, a measurable thing, divided by time, right? In this case, however, it's a judgment of a color, it's blueness, okay? So you can see the standard equation there for calculating rate is whatever you're measuring divided by the amount of time it take, took to make that amount of stuff. But blueness disappearing, it blues per second, is, is not, a, not a union, okay? So 
quite simply, you're going to do time divided by one, time over one. OK, so that is going to give you a, a unit of just seconds to the minus one, the inverse of the seconds, OK, per second, if you like. OK, and that's going to give you a, a rate. So that obviously it means, you know, the higher the number, the faster the rate. OK, it's the inverse of the amount of time. Now, in terms of a synopsis of the method, I'm assuming you've all read this and you know what's going on. You're going to make up your yeast solution with methylene blue added. You're going to incubate it at 55 degrees C. You're going to shake the tubes, not at regular intervals, but at the beginning of the experiment. You're going to shake that through for reasons I've previously described. And then, obviously, the time uh, that the blue colour takes to disappear is what you're measuring. Okay? You're then going to repeat at 45 degrees C and see if that makes any sort of difference. Okay? Now... I just want to finish this one by saying there's a massive problem here in terms of subjectivity. Now, the method specifically says the end point, record how long it takes for the blue colour to disappear in each tube. Sounds straightforward, but of course, as you know by now as Year 13 scientists, that obviously is potentially something that you could be dif um, differing about. Okay, So how blue is blue? How much does the blue have to disappear? How could you make this actually better. Think about colour standards, think about what you would compare this uh, end result to. Okay, And then of course you should know some equipment we can use to, as to how we can get an objective result and maybe you'll be able to see why when we uh, when I show you the experiment as a demo why we're not using one of those pieces of equipment in this experiment given what yeast solution on its own looks like. Okay, So the other question is can you think of a better experiment? OK, can you think of how we could do this better? How could we um, to measure the respiratory rate of our yeast better? Think about what respiration does. It takes in oxygen, it gives out water. Could we measure some of those things and maybe get a slightly better result? OK, so how else could you measure the rate of respiration? And I include this picture, you know, this uh, famous blue dress, you know, famous person covering and Internet thing which of course illustrates this point really, really well, which is the idea that some people saw that as a gold dress and some people saw it as a blue dress and most everybody else didn't care. OK, so that's the experiment in a nutshell. Next thing I want you to watch is I want you to watch the actual demo of how this experiment works and then we're going to write up what happens at the end. OK, many thanks.